Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Thursday, 18th of July. I'm reading Morning Prayer on Thursday in Ordinary Time. You'll find it in the book Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England, Church House Publishing, towards the beginning, after prayer during the day, in the Morning and Evening Prayer during Ordinary Time section, Morning Prayer on Thursday. Alternatively, one may download an app for Apple or Android device. For a small sub, one can use it offline. Uh, otherwise, uh, a Remus Daily Prayer has the words and the Church of England's website itself. Morning Prayer on Thursday, 18th of July. Commemorating Elizabeth Ferrard, and I shall read something more about her from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints presently. If you are following the book, you might like to look up 18th of July, half to two-thirds of the way through, amongst the Saints' Days and Festivals, and you'll find any adjustments to the text, which will be minimal, given that it's simply a commemoration. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, by Zoom, a code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and the audio will appear on my Dominic Dobel YouTube channel in due course. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's blessing. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. <clears throat> let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> we have three psalms appointed this morning. You'll find at the back of the book they are numbers 14, 15 and 16. 14, 15 and 16. The psalms we are now going to read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and abominable in their wickedness. There is no one that does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the children of earth to see if there is anyone who is wise and seeks after God. But everyone has turned back. All alike have become corrupt. There is none that does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people as if they ate bread and do not call upon the Lord? There shall they be in great fear, for God is in the company of the righteous. Though they would confound the counsel of the poor, yet the Lord shall be their refuge. Know that Israel's salvation will come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, then will Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom.
Through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. Lord, who may dwell in your, ho- in your tabernacle, who may rest upon your holy hill, whoever leads an uncorrupt life and does the thing that is right, who speaks the truth from the heart and bears no deceit on the tongue, who does no evil to a friend and pours no scorn on a neighbour, in whose sight the wicked are not esteemed, but who honours those who fear the Lord, whoever has sworn to a neighbour and never goes back on that word, who does not lend money in hope of gain, nor takes a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never fall. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Back to morning prayer on Thursday in ordinary time for the Song of the Covenant. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison of those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. This from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints. Elizabeth Catherine Ferrard was encouraged by Bishop Tate of London to visit deaconess institutions in Germany, notably at Kaiserwerth on the Rhine. Some three years later, in November 1861, she and a group of women dedicated themselves to minister to the necessities of the church as servants in the church. On this day in 1862, Elizabeth Ferrard received the first deaconess licence from Bishop Tate. She went on to found a community with a dual vocation of being deaconesses and religious sisters working first in the poor parish in the King's Cross area of London and then moving to Notting Hill in 1873. When her health failed, she passed on the leadership to others and died on Easter Day in the year 1883. Trailblazer, short-lived in that calling, sadly. <coughs> first Samuel 12, our first Bible reading. Uh, you'll find first time you're about uh, seven books in to the scriptures a quarter of the way in uh, after the first five which is the Pentateuch Torah of course uh, you've got the two or three at the beginning of the history section and Samuel comes after Joshua and Judges we're looking for the number one in the title chapter number one in the book of Samuel sorry first book of Samuel number one in the title and we're looking for the twelfth chapter in the book of first Samuel so easy to get confused first Samuel the book, First Samuel, chapter 12, the chapter number, and the chapter numbers are the large number in the margin within the main body of the text of First Samuel. Scroll back to it if you're following 
electronically. Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to you in all that you have said to me and to have set a king over you. See, it is the king who leads you now. I am old and grey, but my sons are with you. I have led you from my youth until this day. Here I am, testify against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Whose donkey have I taken? Whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or whose hands have I taken a bribe to blind my eyes with? Testify against me and I will restore it to you. They said you have not defrauded us or oppressed us or taken anything from the hand of anyone. He said to them, the Lord is witness against you and his anointed is witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. And they said he is witness. Samuel said to the people, the Lord is witness who appointed Moses and Aaron and brought you or your ancestors up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore take your stand so that I may enter into judgment with you before the Lord. And I will declare to you all the saving deeds of the Lord that he performed for you and for your ancestors. When Jacob went into Egypt and the Egyptians oppressed them and your ancestors cried to the Lord. The Lord sent Moses and Aaron who brought forth your ancestors out of Egypt and settled them in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God and he sold them into the land of Sisera, hand of Sisera, commander of the army of King Javin of Hazza, and into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they fought against them. Then they cried to the Lord, and he said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and served the Baals and the Astartes, but now rescue us out of the hand of our enemies and we will serve you. The Lord sent Zerubbabel and Barak and Jephthah and Samson and rescued you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and you lived in safety. But when you saw that King Nahash of the Ammonites came against you, you said, No, but the king shall reign over us. Though the Lord your God was your king, see, he is, here is the king whom you have chosen, for whom you have asked. See, the Lord has set a king over you. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and heed his voice, not rebel against the commandment of the Lord. And if you, both you and the king who reigns over you will follow the Lord your God, it will be well. But if you do not heed the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, and the hand of the Lord will be against you and your king, now therefore take your stand and see this great thing that the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not the wheat harvest today? I will call upon the Lord that he may send thunder and rain, and you shall know and see that the wickedness that you have done inside the Lord is great. And demanding a king for yourselves. So Samuel called upon the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord. And Samuel, all the people said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants that we may not die, for we have added to all our sins the evil of demanding a king for ourselves. Samuel said to the people, Do not be afraid, you have done all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with your heart. Do not turn aside from useless things that cannot profit or save, for they are useless. For the Lord will not cast away his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for yourself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, and I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully, but with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. But if you do still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. So it sounds like a valedictory. Samuel is um, dying presently. He gathers all God's people and asks them um, if he's been a decent person. And they say yes. And then he um, sets out his charge for them um, in a sort of a courtroom style. Come and gather and stand before me like people. And uh, he tells them um, that they were. Jacob went into Egypt. He was oppressed. He prayed. He was released. They came out. God gave them the land. But then they were oppressed by the Moabites. The Philistines had prayed and they were released. But then they saw that a neighbouring people had a king, so they asked for a king. And uh, Samuel told them at the time that that was a bad thing to do. And um, so they said, really sorry, and he's destroyed their... Samuel then gets God to destroy their crops by bringing rain on them at the harvest day, um, just to sort of underline the fact they've been really bad. And um, But then he says, no, it's all right, you might have been really, really, really bad, but um, God will look after you just because God is God. And so to some extent, it's kind of a bit of a mixed bag, you know, there are some prophets that say, unless you sort yourself out, then you'll suffer the consequences. Or um, God will be faithful even if you're not. We have elsewhere in scripture. But here there's a much more kind of, I think, reasonable, uh, grown-up description where I know that I have let God down. And there are circumstances where I know that God has blessed me and circumstances where I can't see that. And there are times when other people have let me down and I've let other people down. There are times that I've been blessed uh, and I've done well for myself, by myself, and others have uh, cared for me, looked after me and been grateful. And uh, that seems to read much better into this story um, this description this charge from Samuel it seems much more realistic um, than some of the um, declamations of some of the prophets that we read elsewhere in scripture and as follower and as a leader as king as prophet uh, a sovereign however wherever we find ourselves as a leader of household leader in work follower in, in school or in a church wherever however um, let us bear in mind that relationship that we have the responsibility we have for our leaders as they have responsibility for us. Luke 22 from 47, our second reading, we scroll onto it online uh, in a Bible. Luke is the third of the Gospels. The Gospels open the last third of the Scriptures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, um, two thirds of the way through. So we're looking for the Gospel of Luke. And within the Gospel of Luke, we're looking for chapter number 22. Chapter number 22, so that's the number in the margin, large number there, 22. And then within chapter 22, the small numbers in the text, we're going from 47. To 62. Luke 22 from 47. 
While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas is with, Judas is with a kiss, you are betraying the Son of Man. When they were around him, saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. He touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priest, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When was when I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together. Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him, but he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, yes, another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you were talking about at that moment while I, he was still speaking. The cock, cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. So two uh, losses of trust, of confidence, one a betrayal, one a denial. And these are two from amongst the twelve, quite a high percentage. And um, the others have all left, actually. So these are the two that actually engage. And uh, why? Peter has been very courageous, very, um, what's the word, impetuous. Um, in other stories, jumping into the water. No, he's saying yes, he jumps into water after Jesus comes back to life, doesn't he? But um, yeah, saying saying I will die with you and um, speaking out about Jesus being the saviour. <coughs> uh, but now saying he doesn't even know him. <coughs> and uh, Judas, who we haven't really heard from before, except he is told to, to go out and do what he has to do at the Last Supper and uh, complaining, I think he's one of the ones that complained suddenly about uh, the ointment being used to anoint Jesus' feet or head or wherever, whichever part of him was anointed uh, with that. Um, but he's not really to the fore in the Gospels until we get to the Passion. And do we feel that we have let Jesus down? Do we feel that God isn't moving quite as fast as God should be? Do we try and move God's hand and do we find ourselves then making a mess of it? Are there occasions where we really should have spoken up but don't? And why was that? Is it to save our face, God's face, to maintain the party, the flow of conversation, was as major or as minor as any of that? And so God knows and God holds it. So look, looking back at our first reading where there was a description of us letting God down but God sticking with us anyway and if we endeavour to do right, in the end, things should fall well. It's a similar sort of situation here. These and the other disciples have made errors. Judas takes his life, whether he would have done, whether he would have been reconciled afterwards or not, I don't know. But um, Peter is reconciled, even with the conclusion of that reconciliation, follow me, reiterated, whilst that doesn't uh, suggest that we should forget our wrongdoing, the cul-de-sacs and the scenic routes we might go on in our faith. And nevertheless, there is a restoration to the original, uh, with that experience as a bonus. Um, but the relationship restored to the same footing of uh, freshness, of uh, clean sheet, but despite, with that experience of reconciliation. So it's a stronger restoration, it's not just a cancellation, but it's despite all that, nevertheless, here's a fresh start, um, a second go though. So we know already that it's uh, more likely to succeed, to succeed than perhaps the first time we responded and reacted when we hadn't really had any religious experience at all. Response to you back in morning prayer on Thursday. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you walk, pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. The Song of Zechariah. You promised to God to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. 
through his holy prophets God promised of old, to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Make a love a keeper, three in one, one in three. We thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this day and for our very balanced and realistic uh, scriptures, recognising that even amongst your closest friends, even whilst you were here, even amongst your greatest uh, prophets, the relationship with sovereigns and your people um, were iffy at best, but your faithfulness and your hope and therefore our ambition, our inspiration, always remains. May we go into this day recognising our failings, but your grace, and uh, look for opportunities to be the better person and to seek reconciliation and healing in ourselves and in our communities in the light of your grace and mercy. World Council of Churches, prayers for Djibouti and Somalia. We are thankful for the stable governance and economic development that Djibouti has experienced in recent years. And we pray for an end to hunger, violence, crime and conflict in Somalia. From Christian Action Research and Education, we pray for the success of initiatives that seek to protect and rescue vulnerable young people, children in care, people excluded from school, people caught up in knife crime, criminal gangs, drugs, sexual exploitation, other dangers, think of county lines, etc. Um, grooming uh, for, for sex and or for <coughs> um, other purposes, radicalisation. Please help them to escape and recover their lives. Green Christian. Scrolling through to try and find today's entry. Every so often is easier said than done because it's a Oh, there we are. Print ready, so it doesn't kind of just scroll through as a rule normally. Desertification affects around 45% of Africa's land, with 55 considered high or very high risk. This is a huge threat to food security and sustainable development. On the continent, population is expected to grow by nearly a billion um, in the next 25 years. Regreening Africa is an, is an initiative co-led by the Centre for International Forestry Research and World Agroforestry, countering that risk by restoring landscapes across eight countries. The initiative emphasises agroforestry, the integration of trees into landscapes and farming systems. We pray God's blessing on that initiative and we pray that it is um, sympathetic to the ecologies that uh, were, that they are trying to um, enhance and uh, where there is opportunity to restore, may that be um, where the project goes rather than uh, establishing th synthetic um, landscapes where they used to be natural. The five marks of mission of the Church of England include uh, engagement with creation. Pope Francis' prayer in that regard includes the lines, touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Our benefit cycle on Thursdays, we pray for our um, farmers. We pray they might have a healthy relationship with the land, with their bank managers, with their markets, that the land may be healthy and they too. And we pray for our <coughs> producers, wholesalers, retailers, processors. They might have a healthy relationship with their suppliers, their processes, the, the world, the wider world, creation, <coughs> and their funders and shareholders that we as uh, consumers may have a healthy relationship with our bodies, with the land, 
<coughs> with the farmers, with the processors, producers, uh, with the market people, with the people who do the marketing, uh, with our government, <coughs> that uh, the whole web will be healthy for creation and for us as we take our part in creation. Thank you for our people. We pray today for those who are looking after <coughs> the churches in the Chediston group, namely Joe at St Mary's Chediston, St Andrew group, not the Chediston group, St Andrew group, namely Joe at Chediston, Geoffrey at St Andrew's Wissett, Keith at St Peter Spexel, Malcolm at St Margaret's Linstead. <coughs> We pray to draw others in. We could do with at least another church warden in each of those. We could do with a treasurer um, in uh, two of those. We could do with a secretary in uh, two or three of those. Uh, and another two or three on each of those committees with passion and energy uh, and time. Abilities to increase the quality of the maintenance and the level of use of those church buildings, that they might increase their presence within the social and uh, geographical landscape of those villages. Uh, electoral roll names in Wissett include, I'll include Claire, but also Henry, Edward, Eve, Nick, and David, Jennifer, Valerie, David, Diana, Susan, Helen, Hugh, Richard, Kathleen, Thomas, Anne, and in Spexel, Fred, Betty, the Barrels, Caroline, Karen, Barbara, Mish, Roxanne, Patricia, David, Janet, Elizabeth, Craig Ellis Burke and Francis Willis Craig Ellis Burke, the other way around. So we thank you for them, we pray a blessing on them that their faith uh, and influence may grow. <coughs> and we pray you draw others in to those congregations and communities to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, the author of peace and love of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom, defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bye to those joining us on YouTube.